next curve. Hi guys, this is Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and welcome to the Rethink Podcast. And I'm here in San Diego, my hometown, and in fact, in downtown, here at the Intercontinental Hotel. Uh, and I'm here for 5G Summit, Qualcomm's 5G Summit, and I'm joined by Kedar. Kedar, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself real sure. quick? Thanks, Leonard. Yeah. Thanks for joining uh, the Qualcomm 5G Summit. Uh, I'm Kedar Konda, and uh, I'm the SVP and GM for Qualcomm's Compute and Gaming Business Lines, and I'm pretty excited to be here. Wonderful to have you. I'm really glad that uh, we have this opportunity to chat. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of exciting announcements here today uh, and planned for the next couple of days uh, for Qualcomm uh, 5G Summit. And, uh, you know, I just want to delve into a couple of things that uh, you have in the works that you have cooking that uh, you're going to be announcing. But I, I wanted to start off by asking you, you know, um, so what are some of your thoughts? Okay, this whole hybrid work mode that everyone's talking about is becoming a thing, right? And obviously, coming out of the pandemic, we needed to adapt. You know, companies needed to, uh, to adapt. Pe you know, just people in general had to adapt because of the tremendous di disruption that the, uh, the pandemic globally presented. So uh, I know that Qualcomm has a, a big focus on, you know, really innovating in this area in terms of creating new experiences that, uh, you know, enable new modalities of uh, computing. So I just wanted to start off with that question and sure. get some of your thoughts. Sure, sure. Uh, obviously, uh, Leonard, I think uh, hybrid uh, work culture is obviously become a thing. We've uh, definitely embraced the hybrid culture at Qualcomm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we have, uh, we've a couple of days, we've enabled uh, uh, folks to come into the office and uh, for the most uh, part, they can work from wherever they want yeah. to and otherwise. Yeah. So. Um, I believe as hybrid work starts to get more and more uh, uh, widespread in terms of you know where working on the go, working at home or in the office, uh, we're definitely developing a strategy around uh, what does it take to enable uh, PCs and a complete set of devices that can work towards the hybrid environment. And so you know this obviously means there's uh, you know multiple aspects of looking at the hybrid culture in itself. Um, first, I think even if you look at some of the studies, right, like Deloitte uh, basically is uh, predicting that 85% of the people very soon are going to be working uh, in a hybrid work environment. Right. So from a Qualcomm standpoint, uh, the technologies that we enable, uh, like 5G and right. uh, enabling enterprise class PCs and having AI and the ability to work at different locations is something that yeah. we're enabling for uh, uh, for the consumer, and obviously we're doing that with a lot of our partners. I think right. you know, with Verizon and uh, Lenovo and so many other partners, we're making sure that uh, these devices are enabled to drive this uh, hybrid work culture. Well, you know, I have to tell you, uh, I really appreciate cellular connect to be on go, and I'm not just saying that uh, because you know now that we've uh, kind of gotten back to this mode of traveling, and you know, I'm as an industry analyst. And former consultant, I've always been on the road, right? And so you can count me in as really one of those folks who can truly vouch for the value of having, you know, constant connectivity, which I know uh, Cristiano is really big on, right? I mean, that's his thing. It's like we're 100% connected to the cloud, but um, that that is truly something that has always been val valuable for me, and uh, and I've actually been using cellularly connected. Um, PC type devices or you know tablets for a uh, better part of 10 years believe it or not. So, awesome yeah definitely yeah. I think with uh, 5G and millimeter wave and you know even what we've deployed at Qualcomm with uh, you know we have uh, you know fixed wireless access points saves yep. us cost of running quiet cables so yeah right. we've definitely uh, embraced that and I totally appreciate your on the go. Uh, yeah, no, I, and you know, again, that's that's a genuine uh, that's a genuine case study. It's literally Leonard Lee and <laughs> next curve, you know. Uh, but you know, speaking of five G, because this is the five G summit, right. uh, what are your thoughts there in terms of how five G is going to sort of uh, you know, uh, I guess, help us rethink uh, the direction of uh, personal computing or uh, uh, let's call it mobile portable computing. 
Yeah, I think uh, as I said earlier, I think 5G is going to become uh, uh, the center in terms of adopting uh, various work hybrid work environments, right? Like we're partnering with uh, Verizon, for example, to make sure that we deploy millimeter wave or ultra wideband uh, in corporate environments. Uh, this 5G that is going to have a very uh, prominent role in uh, indoor coverage at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, you know, even talking to multiple and looking at the multiple analyst reports, uh, most of the corporate workforce and IT enterprise uh, CIOs are embracing the ability to have 5G in their corporate environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, truth be told, you know, when you look at uh, the cost of running uh, cables and, uh, you know, hardwired lines all over the campus can get expensive. So right, the ability right. to have uh, 5G as a player, very important factor. And obviously for us, it's uh, making sure the devices are 5G ready. So we've obviously, as you know, we have mobile handsets. Uh, we're entering into a new era with uh, computing uh, devices where yeah. they're going to be connected. And uh, there's obviously other devices like XR and other devices that are going to come into the right. mix here mm -hmm. uh, that will take advantage of the 5G deployments in uh, enterprise as well as uh, uh, 5G deployments at home. Okay, yeah, uh, and uh, so I guess my next question here would be, uh, given all of that, you know, obviously you guys do a lot of work with ARM, right? How does, uh, what's the story there? I know that you guys are doing a lot of stuff in bringing the ARM architecture to the personal computing world, so uh, maybe you can share with uh, my audience here uh, some of the highlights of what you guys are going to be announcing. Uh, this week, absolutely. So I think, um, uh, in general, with uh, you know, we've obviously announced that we're going to lead with uh, Windows and ARM. Yeah. Uh, we believe that uh, that is the next uh, computing platform mm. of choice uh, for everybody. Um, the way to look at it is, you know, just as uh, Qualcomm and uh, the way we differentiate ourselves. We have a very rich heterogeneous computing architecture, mm -hmm. so that brings in a good mix of a very strong CPU. As you know, we've made some right. investments in uh, yeah. a CPU. Uh, yeah. We're obviously uh, uh, investing in terms of making sure we have the right graphics. Uh, but right. beyond just as you think of CPU and graphics, yeah. there other there are other areas such as AI, yeah. uh, which play a very important role. And so, as you start tying in uh, newer computing experiences, right. as you tie in 5G with AI with uh, GPU and all of these other use cases, right. things start to become more interesting. I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Like uh, take Microsoft Teams, for example. Mm -hmm. Just through the pandemic, yeah. their uh, user base grew from uh, close to about 70 million users to about close to 270, 280 million users. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to have a rich user experience mm -hmm. that ties in AI mm -hmm. is super important, right? So, you know, we're all, uh, uh, on right. calls all the time and so yeah. you know we're opening a bag of chips while we're yeah. on a call all day and so just the ability to uh, use AI in a video call where you can actually uh, distance yourself from the noise yeah. and have just rich audio content be uh, you know something that you deliver on the call versus removing background noises like whether it's a dog bark right. or any of those right. that's where AI will start to play a very important role so right. that's where we'll you'll see Snapdragon and Windows around differentiating ourselves in terms of these, uh, right. especially as it also ties back into hybrid work environments, right? right. That's exactly what you're gonna see yeah. on the go. So right. overall, I think you'll see a huge benefit in terms of uh, uh, power and performance, and that's obviously yeah. the pedigree that we bring in from mobile. Yeah. So overall, I think we're very excited to bring in some of these different use cases to uh, to computing in, in the near future. Yeah, and you know, I think that's one of the big important points or takeaways from what you guys are doing, especially with that. I mean, I like that you mentioned this this term, uh, heterogeneous computing and the associated architecture, right? right? I mean, because we literally uh, have to think differently about the PC experiences you've exactly. outlined. But, you know, that that is a shift. That's like a big shift. It is. And, um, you know, I think when we look at where PC computing is today, um, we're still scratching the surface in terms of tapping into these, this new, Correct. Um, I, I would almost say, mindset or design uh, thinking uh, around what these PC experiences uh, can be in the future. Absolutely, I think, in, you know, to your point, Leonard, we are 
working with a lot of ISV partners, right? So we work with uh, a lot of them so that they can take advantage of a lot of the benefits that we bring in with all these different cores. Like for example, if yeah. you use uh, Zoom today on a right. Windows on Snapdragon based computing device, yeah. you're going to see a drastic improvement or a benefit in terms of power relative to any other competitive architecture platform that you'd use. So there are these investments that we're making towards driving the ecosystem mm -hmm. to take advantage of these. And absolutely, you're absolutely right. This is the future of computing now. Cool. Well, so I, I got to ask this question. So everyone talks about metaverse <laughs> and all this stuff, right? Um, XR, I, I know that this is a big part of um, Qualcomm's story, especially with uh, you know uh, uh, gaming as well as increasingly uh, personal computing, not only for the enterprise but for the consumer. Um, what what are some of the uh, interesting uh, takeaways that we should have from this year's uh, 5G summit? I think you'll see. Uh from the first point is from a 5G connector standpoint. Uh -huh. If you go back 10 years to where uh, 4G evolved, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, 4G came into the market, mm -hmm. uh, nobody talked about uh, video use cases with things like Netflix to be, uh, you know, Netflix or Amazon Prime or these use cases to be that uh, uh, important uh, yeah. in being able to use 4G. Right. Think of other use cases like when did we think that location-based services, whether it's uh, ride-share yeah. apps, would take advantage of a 4G-based connection, mm -hmm. right? In India, for example, mm -hmm. uh, right now, even uh, when you look at this, uh, you know, different uh, ride-share services like Ola, it's uh, very similar to Uber that you've seen in the United States, that take a lot of advantage. And the drivers there see the benefit that 4G brings mm -hmm. in terms of stuff. And those were investments Qualcomm made, for example, even uh, more than 10, 15 years back with location-based services, uh, time to fix, and you know, now it's starting to be very important. Right. I think with the same way as you see 5G, and all of the devices that connect around it with XR, with compute, all of these uh, different use cases, I think you're, you're gonna see a lot of innovation happen in 5G over the next several years. And we're just about starting now, right? There's a lot of advantages. And I think you've seen with uh, our 8CX uh, Gen 3 platform, we are, uh, and our partnership with Lenovo, we're just about starting our journey uh, in uh, computing with this, with this new computing era. Yeah, and uh, I really dig that. Uh... The X13. Um, I'm hoping to get my hands on. That. It's a beautiful <laughs> device. It's a oh, beautiful it is. device. It's really, really nice. I had a chance to take a look at it in uh, Barcelona when, it, when you guys first made the yes. announcement in your partnership with uh, Lenovo. So, uh, congratulations! You guys came up with a really great looking device. Yeah, uh, which I hope, I hope I'll have a chance to tinker around with. Uh, so, you know, one last thing that I wanted to ask you is this: is uh, you know, one of the things that we hear from Cristiano is that uh, you know. Uh, 5G is going to unleash uh, the power of uh, data, okay? And uh, and he said he states this oftentimes in the context of you know uh, being able to access the power of the cloud, right? And so as you look at personal computing going forward, 5G plus the stuff that you guys are doing with yeah. ARM, how how do you see the the um, way that applications and systems are designed going forward? I mean, what are some of the trends that you think are going to start to emerge as people start to look at how they um, build their applications, deploy them, and then create these, uh, hopefully, uh, compelling new immersive experiences that everyone's been talking yeah. about? It's a great question. You know, um, just a very interesting data point uh, about, uh, if you look at how quickly cloud uh, is growing, it's about it's growing at uh, about a 35% year on year, right? And uh, the number of, uh, the prediction is that uh, within a few years, I think by 2025, 75% uh, of the data is actually going to be generated outside the cloud. Which yeah. what that means is it's gonna be generated on the edge, which yeah. means it's gonna get generated on a lot of these computing yeah. platforms. Yeah. So I think what we're doing right now is investing for the future. Mm -hmm. So we know that there's going to be a lot of distributed computing that will be done. Mm -hmm. A lot of, and that's exactly why you see so much investment in AI, uh, for example, and 5G right. on some yeah. of these devices, be it XR, be it yeah. uh, our PCs. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think you'll see a, a very different approach in the yeah. next few years. And I think, uh, what Krishan is saying is absolutely right. We do see a very different uh, 
you yeah. know, investment as we start to share resources across and bring multiple devices to market. Yeah, well, you know, here's the interesting thing. The reason why uh, we have a lot of the AI applications that we're building and, and deploying out in the edge is to reduce the amount of data that goes to the cloud, Correct. right? And, uh, you know, I think that's a great point and, uh, uh, to end with. And uh, Kedar, so glad that you had the opportunity and uh, you made the time to uh, speak with me. I'm glad we had a chance to chat. And, uh, you know, I hope you have a great, uh, you know, 5G Summit this year. And thank you so much. And to our audience, um, you know, follow us at www.next-curve.com. We have a, a research portal that is available. You can, uh, uh, you know, check out all our content as well as research there. And we will see you next time. And once again, Thanks. Kedar, thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.